I get an email from Nathan, and he says, um, I am running three UHF and four VHF radios. They are oh, all on no. different. <laughs> <laughs> they are all on different frequencies. I what would so. be the What would be the <laughs> minimum spacing for the antennas? <laughs> yeah. Well, the rule of thumb is two wavelengths. Well, yeah. let's just start there. Two wavelengths is the rule of thumb. However, Michael. So if you really want to get technical into it, there is a method that you can use to figure out what your, um, you know, what, how much, you know, how far apart an antenna needs to be for a certain amount of attenuation. So this is a very common, this is a very common issue if you're building repeaters. And um, of course, the repeater guys have got this figured out. Uh, vertical versus horizontal se antenna separation. This is a this is a page over on the website called repeaterbuilder.com, and check that out. It's, it's that site's actually full of tons of stuff. But they have a couple of charts: isolation versus antenna separation, and you can figure out your level of of isolation based, you know, for vertical separation and for horizontal separation. And the general rule is, is that, um, you know, as, as Joe said that, um, you know, you want to get your, you know, you want to be maybe two wavelengths apart, but um, remember well, um, each foot of vertical separation within an antenna is equal to about 10 feet of horizontal separation. So if you can stack your antennas vertically, you'll get higher levels of isolation or attenuation between those two antennas than you will if you um, go uh, side by side. So um, this this chart is a little bit hard to read. I, I so I blew up the um, the chart here. So I'm just going to pull up the horizontal separation chart. And if I've you know, if I look at my antenna spacing in feet, if I've got an antenna at um, 150 megahertz, and I want to be um, Let's see, I want 20 dB of isolation. I'm going to need them to be approximately oh, 10 feet apart. And 20 dB is going to be the minimum amount of isolation for uh, so that you don't get crosstalk between two VHF frequencies. If I want, um, you know, for at the same 10 foot distance, um, a UHF antenna, you know, I, I, I get, you know, unfortunately the chart goes off here. Uh, I would have 30 dB of isolation between those antennas. So you can see how, um, you know, you need less space with, um, you know, as you move up from um, vertical, you know, from horizontal to vertical, uh, or for, from, UH, excuse me, from VHF to UHF. Um, but if I'm going to pull up uh, vertical separation here, let's see if I can get my... Cursor always gets stuck here. Um, now the difference is is a lot more uh, <laughs> apparent. 150 megahertz. Uh, if I want 20 dB of attenuation, all I need is um, five feet of vertical spacing. So that makes a big difference mm -hmm. if you're if if you're trying to um, stack multiple antennas or spread out multiple antennas. So. I think the long story short on this might be that, um, you know, maybe stack your VHF antennas and then your UHF antennas can be on the same, say, plane as your VHF antennas because you need less space to sort of conserve conserve that space on the tower. Right, so. right, yeah. Um, the thing that also we talk a little about, you know, one signal getting into another radio we call that B sense. Um, mm -hmm. So, for example, most times on a repeater site, we have one antenna taking care of two signals. One's a transmit signal, one's the receive signal. And the thing that's always a problem in a repeater is getting that transmitted signal into the receive receiver. Mm -hmm. um, so we use things like bandpass, uh, bandpass cavities, band reject yep. cavities, things of that nature. I don't necessarily think you need to go that far. Uh, it's a little no. bit of an expensive proposition for them to get those and tuning them requires some some uh, equipment that is probably out of just well, 
most hams plugs. You don't need to get a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator uh, mm -hmm. to do that. So spacing is optimal. And you know, so simply put, if you can get the farther you get them apart, the better. The better. Uh, and you can probably pair up a VHF and a UHF together as well. Yeah, yeah. So I'd like to know what he's running. That he's got to have like <laughs> seven or eight of them going on there. That's like he's got something going on there. Is the FBI watching him? I don't know. That's a um, lot. That's a lot of stuff. That's definitely a lot of stuff. Yeah, so as not a, everything is transmitting at once. I assume he's probably got one for EPRS, one for packet, yeah. for wind link. Plus he's got a VHF antenna uh, for repeaters, and then he's probably running some stuff on on UHF as well. So. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. You know, maybe maybe he's listening to public safety. Maybe he's got a GMRS radio. Who knows? So mm -hmm. it's. Uh... Thank you so much for the questions. If you keep sending them, we'll keep answering them. Feel free to leave your questions and comments down in the comment area below. I'll filter through them, and who knows, yours may end up on our next Your Questions Answered live stream. Our Q and A live streams happen on the first Thursday of the month, starting at seven o'clock p.m. Central Time. I hope to see you there. For more articles and information, along with a full line of VHF and UHF antennas for sale, please check out my website at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. Check us out on Patreon. Patrons gain access to exclusive content, and our patrons help keep the mission alive. That's over on patreon.com slash kb9vbr antennas. Well, give us that thumbs up if you like this video, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if it's your first time here. That's your best way to be notified when a new video is released. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day, and 73.